What's up guys, it is Code right here. Welcome to episode five for the advanced speed coding for 1.15 series. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about more about Pathfinder goals. Now, in my first episode, we did create a custom mob that did some things, but I really didn't show you guys the proper way to create Pathfinder goals. So in today's episode, it's be a real quick tutorial, just how to remove the default Pathfinder goals and replace them with your own. I'm also going to go into more NMS things in the next episode. We're talking about how to create your own custom Pathfinder goals. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys a little bit on it, a little secret to show you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So to show you guys the plugin, I'm going to spawn in my custom mob. And when he spawns in, he's a little husk. He doesn't really do much. He kind of walks around, looks around but he does not like chickens. He will kill chickens. And he also does not like turtles, but he doesn't like turtles in a different way. So once he kills that chicken, nope, looks like he's stuck. There he goes. So he doesn't like turtles either, but the thing is he's scared of turtles. So he'll run away from turtles. And like I said, this is a really basic mob. He just kills chickens and runs away from turtles. Pretty simple stuff, but like the most important thing, I just want to show you guys how to do the Pathfinder goals. So let's get right into it. I went ahead and I created the project already with all the basic things that we've been talking about for the last 30 episodes. So in our main class, I in the unable, you'll see I made a command that's called spawn husk. It calls upon the spawn mob class and the class is nothing special. It has our just spawning stuff. It has a basic command spawn husk. It checks if we're a player and then it runs the spawning command that I showed you guys in the first episode. Now this is commented out because I didn't yet create the class for y'all. But before I create the class, I'll show you guys the plugin.yml and like I said, nothing special, just has an API version of 1.13 because that's what I like to put. I mean, you can put 1.15 you like, I like to put 1.13. And then it has the command, the spawn husk. So if you want to go ahead and set up your project, if you are following along to have a simple command, a spawning command, and then we can get right into the actual real code. And that's in this package I have right here. If I right click on this and I go to new class, we can create air or a custom husk class, custom husk. And this is going to extends our entity zombie husk. And it's just, like in our first episode, it's really simple. It sends entity zombie husk. Go ahead, import that. We'll get a little red underline saying, hey, you need to put the constructor there. So we'll create that constructor custom husk. Pass in the location of loc. And then super. We're going to super the entity types dot husk. Then we're passing the craft world of loc dot get world outside that parentheses dot get handle and then two parentheses boom go ahead and import all that and then get rid of this if it auto typed it for you import that there we go and just like that our entity is spawned and working well not spawn i mean i guess we created it now we actually you know we need to set a position for it set position loc dot get x and loc dot get y finally loc dot get z and there we go we just spawned in a zombie husk at that location now a lot of people were asking me where did i get this super from like where did i get all this information and it's actually i decompiled the nms class for entity zombie husk and i looked at their code and i figured out how to super it how to make up my constructor and I do recommend doing this for, especially for NMS, because NMS is not on any website. Now the bucket API, of course, there is a bucket hub, a spigot hub, I should say, a spigot hub where you can look at all the code for the bucket API and figure out how to use it. But net Minecraft server, which is NMS does not have that on any website, but I did for you guys, I did decompile it for my own to show you guys. This is the entity zombie husk class. 
The first thing you'll notice is that it extends Entity Zombie. So I did decompile Entity Zombie as well to show you guys. But the first thing in here you want to notice is the constructor and it has the two things that we need an entity types and a world and that's how i figured out how to send my entity type and a world in there pretty simple stuff and if we scroll through scroll through here you'll see all these different methods that we can actually override and change and make our own and what i actually mean by that is if we go into the entity zombie class and this is all nms don't worry about getting this i mean not the big of a deal if you want to look into these classes, you can download a thing from the Eclipse Marketplace called uh, JAD. If you just type in JAD to the search bar, you'll get a little thing you can download and you can decompile your spigot jar. But in the Entity Zombie class right here, you'll see a bunch of more things that we can do. And like I said, all of these methods here, we can override in our own code to make it unique. And the thing that we're going to be overriding is this right here, this method, initialize pathfinder. This method, of course, is initializing pathfinder. And as you can see inside the method, it has all of their pathfinder goals for a zombie. Now, when we, in our code, when we go and type in at override, public void initialize pathfinder, just like that, we removed all of the basic pathfinder goals just with that empty method we went ahead and we got rid of all that code right there now later in the series or next episode maybe i will uh, show you guys more about this when we talk about custom pathfinder goals we'll actually like probably override a bunch of these methods but for right now the only one we want to override is this initialized pathfinder that's because we want to put our own Pathfinder goals in here. If you went ahead and ran the code though, right now, the entity will just stand still and not do anything because we removed everything from it. Now, before we talk about that, let's go in here and type this dot set baby to true. And then if you wanted to, we can set a custom name. Uh, I showed you guys last time I did it, but I guess I'll show you guys again real quick. This dot set custom name and it is a chat component. So we need to type in new chat component text and then in here we can type in wherever you want you can type in chat color dot yellow plus husky and then once you do set the name we need to, need to set the name visible so this dot set custom name visible to true and boom just like that we created our husk with the custom name that's visible and it's a baby but like i said initialize pathfinder goal if we left this empty there will be no Pathfinder goals, except we don't want to leave it empty because I actually want to throw some stuff in there and the things we want to put in there when we zoom in, because there's a little bit of code, is this dot goal selector dot A and the priority of zero, which means it's the biggest priority, Pathfinder goal float this. Now I will add this goal to every single mob you create. And I found out that like without this goal, I don't know, I, I, for, okay, for, without this goal, my server crashed. I don't know if you guys server crashed, maybe it was something else I was doing, but this goal is really important. It makes your zombie float. And I think it, when it hits water, it does not end well. So let's, let's always add this goal. I always add the goal when I create a mob. And we're gonna add in a bunch of more goals. And it's because we removed every goal with this method right here if we ran the code now it will only have this goal so we need to add in all the other goals all the other look around strolls the attacking the actual movement towards the entity we need to add all these goals in because we took them all out so this dot goal selector dot a and let's add in the next priority goal which is four and this is going to be the new path finder goal and four let's make that one the melee attack melee attack you're passing this 1.0 for the speed and then true and i skipped right to four because in between uh zero and four i'm gonna put some target selectors but right now we're just gonna talk about the goal so this dot goal selector dot a five is a new pathfinder goal 
and five is going to be the move towards restriction. Restriction. We pass in this and then the speed of, we can say two. It's a really important goal as our, as our entity move. And then I copied and pasted it right there because I don't feel like typing everything out again. So Pathfinder goal, the next one that's important to us will be six, of course, and that's the move through village. And I mean, this one's not that important really, but I mean, it's good to have if you want to move through a village. And this one takes a lot of parameters though. So it's taking this, and then it's also taking the speed that it moves through the village, which is right there. And then it's taking a parameter of false, a parameter of one, and a parameter of null. Go ahead and import that. The next one, after move through a village, will be the random stroll. And we can go ahead and just import that because we're randomly strolling at this speed. Last but not least, actually make sure you change that random stroll to seven and then eight will be our last goal. And that goal will be the look around, the random look around. And I think around's under case. I'm gonna pass in this. And if you don't know what to pass in for these things, I usually just type in this, and if it gives me a little red underline, I hover over it and it tells me what I need to pass in. So like for example, if I take away the speed out of mood storage restriction, it'll give me a little red underline and I hover over it and it tells me, oh, I need to add in a double. And doop, add in the double. It's probably gonna add in something like that BD. But I'm just gonna make it set my own speed there. Cool. So four, five, six, seven, I'm pretty sure that is everything I wanted to do. And we can actually set one more goal. Goal selector dot A. And we're gonna make this an eight one because it's literally the same thing. And this would be the pathfinder goal. Look at player. This entity human dot class and then pass in the 8.0 F, which is the speed the head turns at. And it's the same exact priority as the look around because it is the same exact thing. It's just the look, it's the looking motion. Like I said, these are all the goals. We do need to add in some targets. Now for targets, typically you wanna keep the goals for like things like, I'll explain this, things you want the, the entity to do but targets is things you want the entity to do at. So you want the entity to target a chicken, but you want it to melee. So melee is a goal. We, we want to for it to melee attack, but we want the target to be a chicken. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. But targets are things you want it to go after. So this.targetSelector.a and our target priority is one, the new Pathfinder goal. And this one is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be hurt by target. Pass in this. Like I said, when we created this method, we removed every single goal. So we need to create our own. Let's go again. So we need to add in that Pathfinder goal of hurt by target. So when I punch it, it actually takes damage. This dot target selector dot A, pass in priority of two. And this is gonna be the new Pathfinder goal nearest attackable target and then you add in a type the type will be entity of chicken and then the parameter will be this entity chicken dot class and then true go ahead and import all that and then last but not least this dot target selector dot a priority of three new pathfinder goal and this is the avoid target, the type of entity, entity turtle. And then the parameters of this entity turtle dot turtle dot class. And then the 20 blocks. So if they're within 20 blocks, it'll run away. And then the speed. And this is just the speed that looks around and the speed that it runs at. Cool. Just like that, we're done. 
So I created our own Pathfinder goals. Like I said, we had to do more Pathfinder goals than usual. That's because we removed them all. So we want to create all our own. And then once you have the Pathfinder goal set and our end to be created, just like on our first episode, I'm going to uncomment these. And that's because we can just go ahead and spawn it in. So if you didn't watch the first episode, this is how you spawn an entity. Get the world in the NMS. So this is all NMS based. This code right here will only work on 1.15 or whatever import you imported it for. I've imported it for 1.15. Once you create that world, we can create an instance of our husk, which I named Husky, and then I just spawned them in. I'm gonna hop in my server and see how this works. So if I go over here and I type in slash spawn husk, oh, there you go, spawned our husky. And then if I put down a chicken, nope, there you go, it attacks the chicken. And then if I put down the turtle, it should run away from the turtle. There you go, it should run out 20 blocks away. There we go, so that, our mob's done. Hope you guys did enjoy this episode. It was pretty basic. I mean, it goes over like just a zombie as like other videos do. But if you do want to check out, if you haven't seen episode one, it goes over a pretty cool villager mob. Go ahead and check out that episode if you want to see how to create that. I hope you all did learn something. All I really wanted you guys to learn is how to remove all the basic Pathfinder goals from a mob and then replace it with your own. And in the next episode, hopefully we'll talk about custom Pathfinder goals. If you did like the video, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Also, before I go, go ahead and check out the challenges in my Discord server. We are doing a challenge series where I code something pretty cool and I challenge you guys to code it. And you have one to two weeks to code the challenge. After that, I'll go over how I coded it. And then if you did complete the challenge, you get points. Points go towards rewards. And then in the month, the winner will get some PayPal cash. I'll see you guys later.